What is up, all my fellas? All my fellas. All my fellas. So we finally got the Camaro driving again, but we've still got some problems to solve. Why'd it go quiet? We're leaking uh, oil. Something, something blue. Our biggest problem is that there is an oil leak coming from the oil pressure sender, which in theory should just need to be replaced and will be all good. But in addition to that problem, we also have an issue with the fuel system, which is that it's very complicated and very not correct. We've janked together a mock fuel system that has worked up until this point, but it is nowhere near reliable or what it should be when the car is running at full capacity. And then our third problem is that our car is still way too freaking loud to hear what's actually going on behind the scenes. So hopefully in this video I aim to fix all of those problems and potentially get it back out on the road again to start diagnosing if there are any remaining issues with the mechanics of the system and if there's not and we're all good to go that means we get to get back to body work. Now let me start off by showing you what our fuel system currently looks like. So down here is the fuel pump and right here is the fuel line, the hard line that is going to come all the way from the back of the car at the fuel tank. So the fuel tank hard line runs all the way up here. We've got it all clipped in. It looks all good to go. And then we get to the fuel pump and you'll notice that it is not connected to the hard line. Instead, what we have going on, I'll come over to this side. On this side, we have a little red gas tank with our rubber fuel hose just dipped inside of it. That hose runs down here underneath the fan, which is very, very not safe. Comes back up here, goes into the fuel pump and then comes back out here and for some reason, I ran it back down underneath the fan again, and it comes back right up here. And you can see, if I pull it here, we've got our little fuel filter in there. That's the tiny little one that we've been using so far. It comes up here and then eventually goes into the carb. Now that fuel system, as complex as it is, has worked fairly well for what I've needed it to do for the time being. While it's obviously not the most safe to have fuel lines running underneath the fan, nothing ever got caught, nothing ever got hit, although I don't recommend ever doing it that way because you're basically driving around a rolling bomb because there's an open fuel tank in the front of the car. Now my only goal was to get it running and get it drivable and I got that. So now we get to get rid of all of the janky work that I did to get it to this point and actually do it properly. Now for something as complicated as a fuel system, I knew that I wasn't gonna be able to do this by myself. So I reached out to my friends over at Evil Energy to ask them if they could send me over some awesome parts to help make this a little bit easier. Now, not only did they agree to send me some parts to help with the fuel system, but they're gonna help me out with one of my other big problems too, which is how obnoxiously loud this car is right now. Because they sent me two of these bad boys. Now these are their resonators that they sell and we're gonna be able to install these without welding, without anything permanent, just to help deafen the noise a little bit and hopefully make it so we can hear without having our eardrums blown out. Because if I'm just talking, here's the difference. If I say, hey, what's going on guys, in a normal voice, and then I put this up to my mouth, and I go, hey, what's going on guys? It's a huge difference. So for the insanely cheap price that these things are sold for, absolutely necessary to get these, if not for the final build, at least for testing purposes, while we get our engine all tuned in. Now, in addition to everything else, they also sent me this massive fuel filter that will actually mount to the inside of the engine bay. It'll be able to filter and process way more fuel way more quickly, and this will tie seamlessly in with the new fuel system that we're installing. So with all that being said, we've got our parts, we've got our game plan, let's get started. So we're starting here by taking apart the fuel system, which means taking the air cleaner off, pulling all the hoses out, unrouting all of the hoses and draining the fuel out of them, and then of course, removing our little red gas tank. Then we're gonna remove our old oil pressure sender, and this is what the new one and the old one look like next to each other. The new one looks way shinier and way newer. So we're gonna throw some thread sealant on there and put the new one in, and that repair is finished. Now this is what the old fuel line looks like, and I guess I was wrong when I said it had never been hit by the fan because there were some deep gouges taken out of this hose, and that could have been a huge problem for us. So we pulled the old fuel system out, and we are now at our blank slate. And while I was doing that, I wanted to show you guys the difference between the old fuel filter that we had in the system, which is this tiny little thing. Uh, and it is full of quite a bit of dirt. It did catch some stuff, but did not catch enough because our floats kept sticking. Now you take this and compare it to this. 
This is the new one that's going in from Evil Energy, and my lord, is this thing significantly chunkier. I mean, it's it's quite literally probably like eight, nine times the volume of this little thing. So hopefully this one does a way better job of this one. And I actually kind of want to take this apart and see how much grit is inside. Uh, I actually can't take this apart without breaking it. So instead, I'll just show you guys up close how much is actually caught in here. So now it was time to get the hood off, and we're taking the hood off because I need to get the fenders off. And in order to get the fenders off, you have to take the hinges off, which means you have to take the hood off. It's a very complicated process just to get a couple fenders off, but we do what we must in the garage. So four bolts get taken out, and then we're able to take the hood and carry it around and place it gently on the other side of the garage, where it will sit for probably the next few months while we get everything squared away here. Look at that! And now with the hood off, we're able to unbolt the hinges and we're able to unbolt the fenders. Everything back in the day came apart so easily. It's not like modern cars, which I'm actually very thankful for at this point in time in the process because we have to take these off and put them on quite a few more times before this is going to be ready to go. Now, the whole reason that we took all of this off is because I need to be able to get the wheel well arches back in because I need to know where everything needs to mount for the new fuel lines and for the ignition circuit. Now the only problem is that the wheel well arch braces that actually hold them to the firewall are gone. And that is my fault because I simply cut them off thinking that they were some weird piece of excess metal that kept getting in the way and now I need new ones. So obviously we need a few more parts before we can continue on with our build. We need the two wheel well arch braces that actually weld into the firewall. And then we need a couple extra fittings for our fuel system so it can hook up to our carburetor and not leak all over the engine bay. First major thing that we need to get is the wheel well arches in so we can mock up where we're gonna put our fuel filter and some of our wiring that's gonna actually bolt to the inside of that wheel well. Once we get those done, everything else kind of just falls into place and then we can take the wheel well arches off, refinish them, get them nice and painted, fix all the rust that's on them and get them finished so they'll actually bolt back in and be permanent on the car so we probably won't have to take them off again. So we gotta order some parts and I'll be right back when they arrive. So our wheel well braces have shown up and we were able to install the right side wheel well here and get our fender put back on so we can start mocking up the fuel system. Now really all we need to do is find a mounting point on the wheel well for our fuel filter because that is going to kind of dictate where everything else is gonna go uh, as far as the tubing and the hoses and everything that'll connect the fuel system. Now, while I was installing this wheel well, I found out some very unfortunate information. So over here at the very front of the wheel well where our battery tray will sit, I realized that the wheel well is super, super rusted out. You can see a giant hole there. It's all rusted up front there. The old bolts that held the battery tray on are all rusted out. So this wheel well is not good and we're not gonna be using this one. Now the wheel well for the other side is not quite as bad, but I want them to match and I want them to look the same. So we ended up ordering two new wheel wells for the front. Now the two new wheel wells won't be showing up for about another week or so, but that doesn't mean that I can't get the mock-up done for the fuel system because everything in theory should fit into the exact same places on this wheel well as it will on the new one. So all we really need to figure out is the length of tube that we need from one end to another and then from the fuel filter into the fuel pump, get everything measured out and hooked up, and then we should be good with our fuel system. Now to give you a rough overview of how the fuel system is gonna work, we have an AN fitting here that connects to our holly carb that U-turns here. It's gonna come right over here to the wheel well where it will connect up to the fuel filter and this will be our outlet side of the fuel so it's gonna come from right there straight over there. Then over here we're gonna have another U-turn piece that's gonna end up pointing down. That one's gonna run down straight here to the actual fuel pump and in theory it should just be those two lines and we've got our fuel system back up and running again. Now in order to get everything mocked up properly I actually want to mount this fuel filter to this wheel well just so nothing is moving around while we're cutting hoses and getting measurements for everything so our first course of action is going to be figuring out the placement of the fuel filter here and then getting all of our fittings attached to it, measuring out our hoses, and start getting everything attached together. So for the fuel filter, we've got a couple different attachments here that we'll just screw in. Uh, I've got a elbow fitting and I've got a U-turn fitting here for our AN hoses. These look so, so cool and I'm super excited that we're upgrading to something like this because the old fuel system just being rubber lines looks awful and this is going to be nice and shiny and cool and I love nice and shiny and cool and that's kind of what my goal has been with the whole engine rebuild and everything is I want 
the cool colors, I want the chrome, I want the shine, I want the reflection. So having this upgrade is gonna be really, really cool for us. And these just literally thread into each end of the fuel filter. I'm not sure what happens if I need to replace the actual fuel filter, if I have to take the whole thing out, but at least it's just these couple fittings and it should be pretty easy. So we've got our O-rings on, we're gonna start screwing these in. Uh, this is gonna be our outlet side here, which just takes the elbow. And I'm gonna get these all tightened down later on once this is more of a permanent setup. But for now, having this right about here is where I want it. I just want this fitting directly in line with the carburetor fitting right there. So it'll be a straight line that comes right over here. And on the other side, we're gonna do the same thing. Just screw the fitting into the end of the fuel filter. That goes in nice and easy. And that's like right about what I'm looking at for the fuel filter placement right here. We've got the U-turn that's gonna come off and go straight down to the fuel pump. And then we've got this elbow that'll go straight up to the carburetor. Should allow for a nice smooth flow of fuel without any hiccups. So now I'm just gonna take a Sharpie and mark up exactly where I want these mounting holes to be. It's gonna be a little bit difficult to get this to mount properly because these are not completely flat pieces. So we may need to work around that a little bit, but I think for the most part, this should be pretty good for what we're doing. It's actually really hard to find a spot to mount this properly because I don't want the bolts to be sitting up off of the surface of the wheel well. I want it to all be, you know, snug down properly, but there's just no flat place to really mount this well. All right, I think I found two spots where it's gonna mount really well here. I'm gonna drill out some small holes here just to get some bolts ran through and then bolt it down from the inside of the fender well. And hopefully that'll give us a good idea of where everything will sit and then we can start measuring out everything. Actually looks pretty good it is solidly mounted straight in line with there this is right about where I need it it is still a little bit loose again this is just temporary to get everything mocked up for the actual hose length but I think we're pretty good here now we have to just go down in here and pull off our old fuel fitting from the fuel pump and this is very well sealed in here because I used a fitting sealant to help everything stay in place and eliminate leaks yeah, she came out pretty easy. I'm not gonna complain. All right, old fitting out, new fitting going in. All right, now that we've got all of our fittings in, I can show you exactly how this is gonna run. So going from the fuel pump all the way to the carburetor, it's gonna start right here at this fitting. Come up right through here, turn and loop straight into the fuel pump here. Then it's gonna come around through this U-turn, go through the fuel pump, out this 90 degree, from this 90 degree, all the way over to here, through this U-turn, back into the carb, and then into the engine to create power. Now in theory, all I should have to do from here on out is cut the tube to the correct lengths, get it all crimped down onto our fittings, and then we've got a fuel system working again. So in theory, all I should have to do is measure from about here to here, and that is one length of tube. So if I go from there, we can be a little bit long on this. It doesn't have to be super precise because this is somewhat flexible tubing. Obviously, the straighter and nicer it looks, the better. I think if I'm right about there, I'm right about there, we should be good. So I'm gonna mark the actual steel here to show me where my rough cut needs to be. Then we're gonna tape it all down and get these fittings cut. So it's time to introduce you to the world of AN hose cutting. Now what we've done is marked our cut line right here. That's about where we need the cut to be. When you cut it, all of this braid is gonna try and fray out and go everywhere and unbraid the whole hose. And we don't want that happening. So what we do is take some duct tape or Gorilla tape or electrical tape or anything like that. And we're gonna very tightly tape all the way around the braided hose to make sure that nothing frays when we cut it.
Now we marked right about in the middle of where this tape line is, so I'm going to remark that just so we know exactly where our cut needs to be. Then we're just gonna use an angle grinder and cut straight through as straight as we possibly can get it through the line, and then we should have our first piece of fuel line. Now coming back over here to check our lengths, we've got one there, one there. That is going to be absolutely beautiful, just about perfect length. So now what we're gonna wanna do is hook the hose up to the actual fittings. Now our first course of action is to get the braided piece inside this little red spot. And we're just gonna push that in with the tape still on. And once you get the fitting over here, now we can take the tape back off of here. And with the tape off, you're just gonna put the metal piece over the plastic here and push it down just about as far as you can get it to go. We want it to be touching the inside ridge of the aluminum little nipple thing there. So we'll push it down nice and snug. All right, we got it in there. And now this little metal piece back here is gonna just slide up and collar it. We're gonna pull it all the way up there. And now we just attach it to the fuel pump. And there we have it, our first fuel line is installed. Look at that beautiful braided stainless steel, looking amazing. Once again, thank you Evil Energy for providing all the stuff for this kit. It is looking awesome. Now all we need to do is one more line from the pump to the filter, and we're good to go. All right, time to measure and mark out our second line here. And here we are with the finished fuel line setup. Look at these, coming straight out of the fuel pump up to the fuel filter, absolutely gorgeous connections all the way across. I am loving this. I'm gonna have to wipe down the fuel connections because there's a little bit of residue from the duct tape got on everything. But overall, I am loving this. I think this looks awesome. I don't know if I'm 100% set on the placement of the fuel filter here, but I think it's probably the best I'm gonna get. But if anybody else has any ideas, please leave me a comment. I would love to hear your ideas of where I could put this instead, keeping in mind that I'm gonna have a whole air conditioning system right in here and pretty much no room almost anywhere else in the car. Well, I just got the finishing touches done on the fuel system by tightening every single fitting down as much as I possibly could. And I found out very quickly that these are definitely aluminum fittings and unfortunately I made a slight mistake. So while tightening the fittings down and clamping them with different wrenches, I did mar them up just a little bit. And unfortunately, that's just the way it goes with aluminum fittings if you're not using aluminum wrenches. Almost every single one of these fittings had an area where the paint came off and I'm a little bit bummed out by that, but it still looks good from a distance. 
And unfortunately, that's just something that I had to learn very quickly here is I probably should get a set of aluminum wrenches for these if I'm ever doing a fuel system like this in the future. And definitely a tip for anyone who gets a system like this, get some aluminum wrenches so you don't end up scraping or scratching your brand new fittings. But now that the fuel system is all taken care of, all we have to do is plumb the final rubber hose in and then put our fuel tank into the back of the car again and we can actually fill it up and get it running. Now it is pretty late here tonight, so I'm not gonna annoy my neighbors at 11 at night by running this car. So I'm gonna put the tools down for the night, rejoin you guys tomorrow morning, and we'll get the rest of the fuel system hooked up, get our mufflers put on, get our transmission modulator vacuum hose hooked up, and then this thing should be pretty solid to drive. And I'm super excited to see how it runs. Now it's the next day, and I realized that the whole reason that I wasn't able to keep working last night was because it's too dark in my garage to get any work done late at night. So I've decided to invest a little bit of money into getting some better lighting put in here. I purchased eight of these LED light strips that I'm gonna be able to mount to the ceiling of my garage and hopefully will make this whole space a lot brighter and a lot easier for me to see what's going on and will eliminate an excuse of not being able to work late at night. And on top of that, a lot of you guys have commented and said, geez, we wish we could see a little bit better in the garage. We love the project, but we don't know what's going on. So Hopefully this will help quite a bit on both ends of that. Hello down there. Now I get to figure out how these actually mount to the ceiling. Looks like they've got little like snap clips that you just put a simple screw through and then in theory screw it up into the ceiling. So I want my light starting about over here and that looks like as good of ever of a place to start it. It says I don't need to pre-drill a hole so I'm gonna trust them. Well, it looks like they're, they're honest. And I'm not going to tighten it too much so I can still adjust how straight that is, but yeah, that looks about right. Now I just have to figure out how to get the other bracket in and make it straight. And there we go. That's one light in. And for this setup, I'm gonna run an extension cord along the rest of the ceiling here and then down the wall into an outlet so I can easily unplug and plug these in as needed and they don't have to be on all the time. But for now, let's just see what these babies look like with a little power in them. Ooh, that's already way brighter. Holy cow, this is gonna make a huge difference. We got all of the lights installed and now it's time for the big reveal. This is what I normally would be working with at night if I was out here. This is the brightest my garage got before installing these. This is what my garage looks like with none of the lights on. And now let's check out what it looks like with everything on at maximum brightness. That is an absolutely huge difference from what it was before. I can see everything better. I'm sure you guys can see everything a whole lot better. And overall, I think this is probably one of the best upgrades I've done to this space since moving in. I am so, so, so happy with this. It'll definitely allow me to work a lot better at night, which means I can film a whole lot more content because that's when I have the most free time. I only had to do a tiny bit of custom work to get these to fit as well. You can see right here, I've spliced two of these cables together in order to get them to connect over to each other just because I have a huge gap there. But you guys could put a light bar right in between there to kind of fill that gap. I just wanted symmetry all the way along the garage ceiling. So I put four down each line on each side and then connected them with one big long cable that I just spliced together there. 
Now these lights aren't sponsored, but in case you guys do want to get yourself a set of them, I'll put a link in the description in case you want to buy some. So with the new lights installed, there were only two things left to do. First up is to install our brand new mufflers. Now these go in so easily. There's just a simple exhaust clamp and it clamps the resonator directly to the headers. So there's no welding, there's no complicated install. These were the easiest piece I think I've installed on my entire car so far. So now that we have the resonators installed, all we have left now to do is check if our fuel system works. And with the fuel system all primed, it's time to hook the distributor back up and hear this baby fire. Ready? Now the engine was sounding absolutely amazing, but unfortunately my microphone was set way too sensitively and it picked up only basically loud engine static noise. So none of the audio in this clip is usable, but I did record a second clip for you guys to hear what this is actually sounding like. But obviously we were enjoying it in the moment. We were having a great time listening to this thing running with the new fuel system, but take a look at how it really sounds now. Sounds good. <laughs> Man, that response is instant. It works! Yes. And the, the mufflers good. sound awesome. Nowhere's near as loud as it was. No, no, it's like, it's it's loud, but it's, yeah, it's not like ear bleeding loud. So as you can see, our engine is working amazingly. Again, our new fuel system is flawless. Everything is working properly with it. The new mufflers make this engine sound completely different. It is so much better. My ears are not ringing while running this in the garage and I can actually hear what's going on with the engine. All of our strange noises that were coming from having open headers are now gone and I could not be happier with the results of the work that we got done in this video. But we are nowhere close to having this project done anytime soon. We've got new wheel wells going in, we've got body work to get done, we've got stripping to get done. There is so much more to go on this car and there's no time to waste. So with that being said, thank you guys so much for watching this video. I hope you all enjoyed and I will catch you in the next one. See ya!